First of all, as I think it's only right to say, congratulations to the Golden State Warriors for winning the series we all expected them to win. Um, Kevin Durant for making Finals MVP. I think I would have went with Steph. Yeah, it was close to him and KD, but I went with Steph because he got robbed of the first one in 2015. If it's close, I'm going to go with the guy who deserves it more. Um, but you, you can't argue with Kevin Durant, one of the two best players on the planet. Probably going to end up one of the 15 greatest players ever. Um, and congrats to uh, the city of Philadelphia for winning the LeBron James sweepstakes. <laughs> I don't know if you'll actually get them, but you've got to be the front runners. That's where I would go if I was LeBron. I did. First of all, I'd definitely leave. Like, that's not even a uh, discussion anymore. Um, I'd probably go to Philly. You get to play with fucking Magic and Kareem. I mean, uh, Ben Simmons and uh, Joel Embiid. And you can win four more rings, maybe. Maybe one next year or the year after that. And then God knows how many Gold State starts to get old. Steph's fucking ankle starts hurting. Light skin in this starts taking over his fucking body, right? Fucking, uh, you'll be better than Boston, because Boston only has one superstar, Kyrie, who can't stay healthy. Uh, though Jason Tatum could turn out to be Kobe. Who knows? Um, and Houston, stop it. Against any of those teams, just stop. Stop it. So that would be my move. But I couldn't even focus on all the things that were happening, because I fucking decided to flip through the fucking channels. And the most hateable man on television. Popped up doing things that are fucking awful as he does. But when you see such a glaring lack of effort, that can't be ignored. And I'm not going to sit here on national television and ignore this to our viewers who expect the truth from me, you, and everybody else. You're giving it to them. I'm giving it to them. That's our job. This team quit. I cannot stand him. I don't understand how he's on TV. Now, listen, let me be clear. I, at one point in time, I didn't enjoy Stephen A. Smith. In fact, I would say I probably could enjoy Stephen A. Smith more, or at all, in bursts. Short bursts. One minute at a time. A segment over here at a time. Oh, he's on the uh, okay, once a week, twice a week. He's on TV every fucking day, multiple times a day. He's got that show two hours in the morning on fucking first take where he just railroads over everybody else. He talks over Max. He speaks for five minutes. Then Max speaks for two minutes. Then he cuts him off and speaks for another five minutes. Then Max tries to get something in and then Stephen A. cuts him off again. I cannot stand Stephen A. Smith. The yelling. Nobody's this fucking passionate about anything except me right now. Why is he yelling about everything? Everything's a show. Everything's a fucking... Uh, fucking a, 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 a dramatic production where he's got to fuck put his hand on or drink tea or make faces or make proclamations or fucking spout as if he's the greatest fucking NBA philosopher that ever fucking existed. Are you outside of your fucking skull? This man got seven NBA finals in a row. Wrong. You literally have a 50% chance. You could flip a coin and get one out of seven right. He had all seven in a row fucking wrong. And how did he get one right finally? It took Kevin Durant joining a 73-win team for him to finally get a prediction right. It took the fucking Avengers against LeBron James for him to find, oh, yeah, okay, I think, I think the Avengers can take it. Fucking idiot. I hate him. I hate his guts. I know most of you don't watch sports, but it bothers me. It, ugh. Ugh. How this man gets to be on TV and spout nonsense about, ugh. I don't understand. And it's not even that he's still, there's lots of assholes on TV. Skip Bayless, Nick Wright, uh, I'm sure I'm missing a bunch. Oh, Colin Cowherd, a bunch of people who have no idea of what they're talking about. But only Stephen A. Smith has this aura of, I'm, I know what I'm doing and the rest of you need to just fucking fall in line as if he's some type of genius. He's not, he's a bum. He's a bum with the worst hairline ever. Listen, his hairline is right in the middle of a respectable hairline. So, like, a respectable hairline would be, like, a regular guy. And then, like, George Jefferson, like, you're going bald. His is right in the middle, somewhere around here. And he just keeps growing it out. As if it's the 70s. Like, he's got a fro. It's just, it's, shave it. Your head can't possibly be that bad. You're a black man. Shave your head. Everybody else has got some smarts. Kobe started losing his hair, shaves it down. Same thing with Jordan. Same thing with fucking oh, LeBron's pushing it. <laughs> you don't have to go completely bald. Just the low cut. Just the lowest season you could possibly imagine. 
by the way, for those of you new to uh, black things, Caesar for us is like a really low haircut. Like, I'm trying to think of somebody in the who has a Caesar. Um, like Kyrie or um, Kanye West before he went insane again. That's like a Caesar for us, not the actual fucking Julius Caesar. This was supposed to be a congratulatory thing for uh, Golden State. I wanted to talk to the NBA, but I got sidetracked with Stephen A. Smith. As I tend to do from time to time. To be fair, that's not on him. That's probably me. I will say this, however. After watching the season, unless Golden State does something dramatic. Really dramatic. Like, not really dramatic, but dramatic enough. Like, they got to ship out probably Iggy and Sean Livingston. Definitely one or the other. Both getting older. They're both not nearly as good as they were a couple years ago. And you got to get some younger guys in there. You need some more bench pieces. You need some more ancillary pieces. Because if the entire NBA came back as they are, Golden State could probably win. But that's not going to happen. LeBron's going to go somewhere. Boston's going to get better. I'm telling you, Jason Tatum's going to be Kobe fucking Bryant. And then they'll have Kyrie and Gordon Hayward. Um, Philly, Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid are going to be uh, Magic and Kareem. So they're going to be formidable no matter what. Lord forbid if LeBron James joins them. And enough of this, do they have enough jump shooters? You can find enough fucking jump shooters. If you tell me you're going to get LeBron, Magic, and Kareem, I'll take it. Fuck the shooting. I'll just take it. I'll take my chances with twos. And a crowded lane. If he goes to Houston, Houston's probably the favorite, too. Um, if him and Paul George go to L.A., they're going to be okay. Pretty good, I'd say. Semi-finals, maybe conference finals. Um, if he was to go to our um, San Antonio with Kawhi, LaMarcus, and Pop, That could be something else. See, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm thoroughly interested in where he's going to go. I'm interested in where you guys think he's going to go. Where would you, first of all, where is he going to go? That's the number one question. Where is he going to go? And number two, where do you think he should go? And don't say your team. Like, I let him come to Knicks just so I can see him every night. Um, but for what? Why? Anyway, uh, post your comments down below. Like, share, subscribe.